So welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today, we'll be looking at Slack's new Connect product, which essentially aims to bring together Slack organizations and improve the way that we communicate both internally and externally, almost taking on email to some extent as a way to grow and get things done as a company. Before we dive into today's video, this video is sponsored by Sanebox. I'll include a little bit more about it at the end of today's video. So Slack has had a pretty good start to the year. In Q1 of 2020, has seen 750,000 new free and paid organizations join Slack. And from that, 122,000 paid customers. In a recent announcement from Slack, Slack has launched this thing called Slack Connect. And Slack Connect is essentially a way to continue your conversations on Slack but bringing in external organizations. Now, previously, two companies can actually connect via things called shared channels inside of Slack. Instead of relying on email to relay info back and forth, imagine having a single productive place to communicate with everyone you need to get work done. In a shared channel, you can easily keep external and internal teams in the loop just by sharing updates and work in the channel. But they are going to be growing this capability, allowing up to 20 organizations to be added to a single Slack channel. So for example, you can bring in your design firm, you could bring in the supply chain you're working with, you could bring in a marketing agency, and they'd all be included inside of this one Slack channel. Now Slack are actually touting that this is much better for security because with email, external email, you could actually get a few issues and actually state that $12 billion is lost a year through business email scam and that 90% of data breaches are caused by phishing. And they believe that bringing the conversations and outreach to Slack would be a much more suitable suggestion. Slack has always been trying to kill email, but this is probably one of its biggest leaps in allowing to do that. Allowing to bring in organizations that you work with quite regularly can build a branched network that will connect you to a lot more. Seeing as a lot of companies utilize Slack, they're trying to reduce the amount of people that are text messaging, WhatsApping, and doing traditional email. I think it might seem like something that's simple. You know, we have a channel, they have a channel, and now you can speak across those boundaries. And in some respects it is, but at Slack, we deliver over 65 million messages a second at peak times. Apparently so far, 400 million messages have been sent by over 1 million Slack Connect users. Organizations with over 500,000 users sharing channels with other organizations across boundaries. To date, we've sent over 400 million messages by over a million users, and people are running their business today on Slack Connect. So apparently Slack paid users will be able to get this feature sharing an invite link. But if you are a free user of Slack, you will not be able to get access to Slack Connect. So they don't just believe that this will be the location for messaging. They think that, for example, setting up Google Calendar of invites, but actually taking the data from all the people who are part of the organization's different Google Calendars and bringing them in, finding the right time, to actually find the best slot for everyone. And they think that connecting these different applications, invoicing, contracts, can all go beyond email in bringing together an organization much more effectively. I definitely see this working much more for larger teams that say have a lot of different uh, organizations that are involved in a certain launch or a certain routine activity. But for smaller organizations that don't really see this being too much of a product. But then again, time will tell, time will show us whether this will be suitable for those guys. So folks, you can check out the video all about Slack Connect that we've included below, as well as an interview with C on CNBC and exclusive with Stuart Butterfield, the founder of Slack. So interesting moves by Slack. Will you be using Slack Connect in the future to connect and work with other organizations or will you be going with traditional email? It's definitely a big conversation at the moment, email and this whole being able to communicate remotely from home. So it's super exciting to see how this plays out. 
So folks, if you're new here, please do subscribe. But without further ado, here's a little bit more about SaneBox. These days we get inundated with the emails, so it seems it's no longer about responding to them all, but the ones that truly matter. And that's why you need to check out SaneBox. I've personally been using SaneBox for the last two years and have loved the way that the AI monitors my inbox, moving any unwanted emails right into a folder called Sane Later, leaving me more time to focus on processing emails that are important and not the, every single one that comes in. Apparently SaneBox users save roughly three to four hours a week on email. What's really cool is you can train the system as well. So if you find an email in the wrong folder, just move it and it will train over time. There's no installs, no learning, and it works with all email providers and services out there. I personally use it with Missive. It also has some nifty features like Sane Black Hole, where you can drag messages from annoying senders you never want to hear from again, and Sane Reminders to ping you if someone hasn't replied to your email by a certain date. Now you can get a two week free trial and $25 credit by visiting sanebox.com slash keep productive. Anyway folks, a big thank you and I hope you enjoy.